Vodafone presents the pre-match. Our first pre-match of ESL1 Katowice's day number five overall. Day number two inside the Spodek Arena is going to be a big one. It's a fantastic feast of Dota 2 action from two SEA teams who have gone head-to-head -head many, many, many times in qualifiers and at lands, and it's always a bruising battle. Fnatic versus Maneski, and we're going to kick things off with getting some words from Ice Ice Ice. Indeed we are. Thanks, Paul Ice. Um, the panel has talked a lot of, yeah, that's us. <laughs> the panel has talked a lot about uh, Fnatic, Emineski, the Southeast Asian showdown, the thriller. How do you feel facing a fellow Southeast Asian team? Um, against our friends. I mean, I like Nana. I mean, Nana is just there and yeah. I mean, right now, they, I don't think they can hear you very well, so you could say something about them. Nana! Okay, well, they can definitely hear you there. <laughs> All right. Uh, you guys had a break day after your games on, uh, on Thursday. What did, you, what did you do with your team? I mean, I wanted to play Dota Chess, but I don't think I'm allowed to. Uh, we kind of ban all other games when we are playing an event. So I, I play like 12 pub games. Yeah, that's about it. And you told me earlier that it's mostly, mostly uh, Dubu and Jabs sorting through all the drafts and, and crafting theories and strategies around that? Kinda. I mean, the rest of us are just lazy, actually. So Dubu and Jabs does everything. But it seemed to be working out, being lazy, oh, at least. Uh, that's Paul, that's Paul. Paul is like our Filipino analyst and guy, yeah. Is he, and he's here, too? No, he's not here. He's, like, something happened. Oh, that doesn't sound too good. I hope he's okay, but at least he's okay enough to go through all the drafts, for example, of the tournament going on in China right now, right? I hope so. It's kind of, it's getting late, I think. Wait, it's, it's not, it's not. It's like 3 p.m., 4 p.m.? No, 5 p.m., 5 p.m. Uh. At least he's, he's doing work for you guys and he's helping you guys out. Uh, you're going up against Mineski. Did you have any expectations that you guys set before coming into this tournament that uh, you're still looking to, to make through? Yeah, I think we, I did an interview like three days before. Mm -hmm. Like our aim was to get top 16 and we managed to do it, so I'm kind of happy. Top 16? Yeah. There's 12 teams at this tournament? Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. How do you feel? Great, actually. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to wish you good luck for, uh, for your match against Mineski. I'm going to look forward to seeing you guys play. And uh, I'm going to send it back to Paul. Probably a good time to do so. Get out of there quick, Shiva. Well done. You survived two Ice 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 interviews in the same weekend. I think it might be some sort of record. Uh, it's, um, it's interesting, these two. I, I, I like it when two SEA teams go head-to-head, -head, Kyle, because there's usually fireworks. Just uh, because of the way that they play, that style of play that they've got down, it seems to be almost their own little meta. Yeah, for sure. And it's cool that these both these teams are also going to the major already. Yep. So there isn't that or of, oh, will they, won't they, roster change. Like, they're both on the rise, yeah. and I think that they've also both done a good job of kind of figuring out what they, in, as individuals, like to play. Mm -hmm. Mineski specifically, it looks like a different team from what I witnessed, you know, a month ago. Took yeah. Pi some time to really acclimate and get his thoughts and ideas instilled in his teammates, so it'll at the very least be fun to watch. Can't be, can't, uh, no, I'm not gonna name names from the series yesterday, but it should be good. All right, um, we're going to focus on the Fnatic boys cap to start things off. Um, how, how important has Ice 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 been to them? Uh, pretty important. <laughs> you know, it's Pango's my favorite hero, yeah. uh, so I'm always excited to watch Fnatic as well as Secret right now. They're only two teams at this tournament where they actually have a legitimate Pango um, that is a threat that they can pick up. The problem is, is these two teams are so good at it. Uh, Mid one very quickly established himself good enough that teams will actually firstly ban it. And I think that's important to be able to have that kind of threat from a... Like, if you want to be a Tier 1 team, you need the kind of players that can establish that kind of threat, that transcend the meta and just say, I'm good enough at these sort of heroes that you have to target me. Yeah, and they also have one of those on the other team as well, in the, in the former Moon, but we'll, we'll talk about him in a moment. Um, well, what have, what have you made of Fnatic's tournament so far? Because the group stage, they look red hot. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think they're, they're just a fun team to watch. They are. Like, they're... I don't know if they're ever going to be the best team in the world, but at the very least, you get to say they're a really fun team to watch because they play aggressively at all times. They try to set up for kills. There's never really like a stop moment for them, and I think that comes down to the types of players that they have. They've got Abed and Ice Ice Ice, like you said. 
they're kind of just hectic. They sort of just make things happen on the map. Yeah. Sometimes against the better teams, I feel like they run into the issue of like, well, what did we do? Why did we make that happen? But against like every other team, they're just gonna they're gonna collapse you with their pressure. And uh, in that regard, at least, I think they're they're fun, easy team to watch. As a result, I'd like to see a little bit more stability out of them. I don't think they're far from being a top three right. team. It's just they're missing that small little element, and maybe this is what's gonna allow that to happen. Yeah, and to that point, I feel like they rely a lot on their individual skill, which is not something you see. The C like Secret VP Liquid, EG, these, well, not Secret VP Liquid, they all have a ton of individual skill, but they also have that strategical dominance where you know that as a unit, like, it's, it's smooth. Mm. I get afraid for Fnatic when I see them do things, like, you know, they'll last pick a tiny mid, or they'll just over rely on just this triple core, you know, like some Weaver, Timber Saw, and a mid hero. And it's like, okay, we're gonna go out and play you. Yep. But it's just not, I don't think it's sustainable if you're gonna be the best in the world. I don't know what they have to do to necessarily fix that. It just feels like when they go up against like the secrets, they're just always outclassed, even though I'd argue they have the same talent. But why is that? There's a big difference, right, between the like, <laughs> Real quickly to go back to the Pango, right? There's a difference between the philosophy of Secret, who teams will ban first three, but we've also seen, I think it was like two series ago, it wasn't actually banned at all. And Secret didn't pick it up at all in this series, right? Whereas Fnatic, you leave it out there, you're gonna first one, two, mm. right? They're saying like, we're good enough that we can just pick it up, but they're not taking that extra bit of like, saying we have so many other diverse strategies that we're only gonna pick this really strong tool when it's a good game for it. Mm. And I, I agree with you and just that like extra strategic depth yep. that the true top tier teams have. Yep. All right. Okay. Um, we're going to move on and uh, talk about Mineski now, uh, their opponents who haven't managed a series win against Fnatic since November 2017. Their captain will be hoping to overturn that little curse and Pylon die. And we will catch up with him right now. I couldn't stay focused. Like, I had no idea what was going on in that game. I just tried to move my hair around, but honestly, I played extremely bad that game. And yeah, and I drafted that lineup too, so it was overall just a bad feeling. But my teammates, you know, they tried their best, and we almost pulled it out, but it was a hard game. After the first game, we uh, discussed, like, what went wrong, and it came down to the draft. Like, uh, we just made it too complicated to win. And then, like, we knew that if we just played a bit more normal, we picked a real carry lane kind of normally, like, we should be able to beat these guys. Definitely gonna be our toughest match so far, facing Fnatic. I just hope we can up our game a bit more, like so we like keep climbing, playing better. Because if we play as we play today, I don't know if we'll win. But yeah, we're gonna try our best. I don't think we're like good enough to be their rivals yet. But uh, hopefully, if we beat them here, then yeah, then we'll be rivals. Pine I die, uh, easing into the captaincy role. Uh, another protege of a uh, former player playing alongside uh, Puppy, of course. And we've seen plenty of the ex players playing alongside him turn into very good captains. One in particular at Team Liquid, of course. Um, does he does he have the same trajectory though? Mm, as as Puppy? Yeah. That's we, tough we, could, ask. We, could we end up seeing Pine I die as the next Kuro that comes out of that kind of Puppy school of captaincy? No, nah, you know I. Uh, he's too nice of a guy. Is he? Yeah. Does he need to be a bit more mean-spirited? He has the longest tenure on a team with Eternal Envy in history. And I think that <laughs> Ella just articulates how good of a guy he's got to be. You're willing to put up with some shit. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and that, unfortunately, is not what... I don't think that personality archetype is going to be able to push people to be the best in the world consistently. Okay. Some would say that's a very good quality to be able to have, though. Tolerance. Yes. But all the top tier captains, I mean, Blitz, you've worked with two different captains. I would say, like, Puppy and PPD, I have, like, everybody knows about their kind of hard-ass personalities. Yeah. They're very forward with it. Uh, I would say other really great captains, we have Misery and Kuro. Blitz, you worked with both of them. They can both be pretty tough, right? Oh, yeah. I, you know, on the best of days, I hated them. It's like, <laughs> like, the thing about Curl was that, um, like, I love him like a brother. I really do. But at the same time, like, you know, he's not trying to be anybody's friend. Like, that was my job. His job was to be, like, the dad. Yeah. You know, he's just, like, 
he's just angry it's, and it's the buckle all the time yeah, yeah. It's right and it's like i had to be i had to calm him down and be like don't worry about it you know i had to be the kind father and he was the angry father it's like we played some good cop bad cop thing like when he needed to he was just a disciplinarian at all times he's like i remember he'd get so disappointed one time the team started playing like bleach first one peach piece for like one week and he was like telling them he was like giving them like a rousing speech and he's like i believe we can be champions oh bleach versus one piece he was so mad at them he was so angry like he just get angry for no reason i remember like one time we're in the middle of a scrim it's like somebody's not listening to him i don't want to like say names but he just Tell like pauses <laughs> and he's just like if we're gonna play like that like we're not gonna play like come on like get your shit together like he would not stand for stuff like that right. and i to go off this point, I think it's one of the biggest misconceptions that a lot of tier two, tier three, and or amateur players have is that you're supposed to be great friends, buddy, buddy with your teammates all the time. And that being the best at Dota is gonna be fun all the time. Uh, to quote uh, like Ali, right? Muhammad Ali, arguably greatest boxer of all time. He said, I hated every minute of practice, okay? But I told myself, suffer now and live the rest of my life as a champion. The key word is suffer, okay? It's not sunshine and rainbows. If you want to be the best at a discipline where you get to win millions of dollars and there's a hundred or thousand other people trying to beat you, you can't just be like, oh, well, we lost, you know? It's okay, man. The thing about it, though, is like, I didn't have fun all the time during practice, for sure. It was hard. But Kuro, for me anyways, he taught me like what it was to be a professional. Like you show up, you do your job, then you reap the fruits of your labor. You know, we'd go to events, we'd always come first or second. That felt so good. Being on TC, like I know it's the what the flip side was like <laughs> when you go to an event, you don't practice as hard, you get last. Like yep. All right, okay, hold those thoughts. Um, we're gonna get more from our panel in just a moment. But part of being a professional is enjoying, or maybe not, I don't know, uh, the walk-ins and the adoration of the crowd. And that's exactly what we're gonna get right now. Katowice, are you ready for our day two of the playoffs? Feeling the hype, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to ready to get this started. We have a throwdown coming your way. Let's welcome our first team. Give it up for Fnatic! There they are, look at the aggression seeping from their eyes. Fire, that's right. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Fnatic. Pilot Dice said they're not ready to be rivals right now, but I think we beg to differ. We wanna see these guys go at it. Let's give it up for their opponents, Minuski! Oh, we are ready. Give it up for Mineski. Katowice, we have an SEA Slugfest ready to happen. Give it up for Fnatic versus Mineski. A slugfest indeed. That's what we're looking forward to. Fnatic versus Maneski, an all SEA battle. And we know how these usually go down. Their own little meta, their own little bit of needle, and plenty of former players on either side. As I said earlier on though, Cap, a little bit of a hoodoo around this one for Maneski on land. Haven't beaten Fnatic since November 2017 in a full series. Mm. That's quite a while. I know they've been through a number of roster changes and a load of different players, but 
You know, it, it's funny because we had this rivalry online with qualifiers over the last few years, and, and one year it always seems that one of them is the one that finishes ahead of the other, and it swaps every single year. Yeah, Mineski, I think, is definitely like of the top like three, four teams in Southeast Asia. Mineski kind of felt like the lowest man on the totem pole. Yep. They've been making their rise lately, but I do, I, I am glad that Pilot Dai kind of acknowledged the fact that he's like, I don't feel like we're good enough yet. Right. And and that for me is like a really good sign. Like sure, it maybe lacks a little bit of confidence. Well, yeah, it? but at, at least you know that you're growing as a team and you're beginning to become established. Yeah, yeah I mean, isn't isn't part of being a good captain, Carl, taking the pressure off your teammates for as sure. well? And I think the key word Cap used was yet. Right. That's it, it's realistic confidence. Right. You expect to be great, but you recognize the importance of work and how you're not quite there yet. Yeah. Um. And I think that these two teams have been a staple for the scene for quite some time. Easily the most. The, the most, I want to say, yeah, you know, it's Mineski, TNC, I was going to say fanatic. TNC, yeah, the other but ones. But TNC is a, their professional conduct could be improved upon, whereas Mineski and Fnatic, they've been, uh, they've been rocks for a reason, I think. You said earlier on, Kyle, Mineski look a different team to a month ago. Mm. Um, Will, I want to ask you, do they look a different team from the group stages? Oh, yeah, for sure. I, the best example that was, uh, I asked Webby yesterday, I was like, uh, how are you not tilted after game one? Remember the like epic game yep. one, 80 minute game? I was like, you guys end up losing that game. He's like, dude, we're loose. We're used to losing. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we went 0 and 4 first day. Nothing tilts us now. And he was dead serious. He's just like, I don't care. Like, and then KP was there. He's like, KP, do you care? He's like, no, nah, mm -hmm. dude. And then in the third game, I was like, you guys lost all three of your lanes. Yeah. Weren't you tilted? He's like, we play better when we lose all three lanes. He's like, when you win all three lanes, we never know what to do. It's confusing. He's like, we're not used to that. We need to be constantly losing in our games to feel like it's a normalized environment. And then you talked to Pi, and I was like, were you nervous? He's like, dude, I thought we lost that game. <laughs> so it's like some weird thing where they're strangely okay with the concept of losing. They've gotten so comfortable with it yeah. that now it's swung the other way into some yeah. weird confidence where they're just all right with it. Yeah, think about it. Pile I die, like I just said before, longest tenure of any player with Eternal Envy. He's going to be used to losing by this point. And that attitude, I think, that positivity in the face of adversity, it's it's infected his squad. And all like they were really in the the, the, the dumps for quite some time. If I'm not mistaken, they lost, I think, an open qualifier to the second minor. Like, they were really not looking hot. And the, the team put a lot of work in. I know that uh, one of their old coaches, like Kenshi specifically, he's like higher up in the organization, is like starting to work with the team again. Because uh, he's got, yeah, I don't want to say a hard ass, but you know, he, he, he don't play no games. Like, he's going to whip his team into shape and combine that with one of the smarter new captains in the scene. Real quickly, before the draft progresses too much, mm. we said Mineski's a weaker team. Can we establish why they're a weaker team? Like, what, what parts of them is weaker than Fnatic? I think strategy-wise, they were lacking for some time. Mm. Uh, like, uh, at this tournament especially, you can see who is top tier and who isn't, just based on, like, how flexible they are in drafting, if they ever, you know, how they play the mid and early game. Because I feel like the early game is one of the hardest things to perfect in Dota. Uh, just being able to know like when we're going to take towers, when we're not going to take towers, what towers are going to defend, how we take Roshan, stuff like that I think really shows for me like who's good and who's bad. Like for example, Secret play this decisive style. They take towers, they know what to do, they never roam as five, they know how to split up on the map, they know when to get farm, when they're supposed to fight. Their mid player probably has the best understanding of the game that I've seen so far. Mid one just always knows where to be, he always collects farm. Stuff like that, these little things that you might not yep. notice off the bat, I think sort of determines it. I feel like Fnatic at least have the edge yep. in uh, the early game department. I, I was talking with uh, Ben about this yesterday. We were discussing how there's like this statistical analysis about looking at games and obviously when reaction time plays a part, like that doesn't count. But in what game would having the ability to like call timeout or pause for 30 seconds to discuss as a team what the next play is, the argument is like Dota by far has the most difference as far as what you would do with only real time and what you could do with the timeout as far as improving the play of your team as the game continues. Because Dota requires this like on the fly, constant critical thinking and value based reasoning. Like, okay, how far do I push? Like, how, I'm risking my death like 20%, 30%, 40%. You're not thinking in those terms, but that's what's happening. And it's all game. Teams like Mineski, they're not quite fleshed out completely. A squad like Secret, they know how to win the game. Liquid, they know how to win the game like seven different ways. 
plays, different things they can abuse, and they know that if GH is shoving this lane over here, the Tumbleman can play X aggressive. Maneski, it's more rigid. They have like this one or two different ways of understanding. You lose the lanes, game becomes simple. Hey, we got to smoke, make some big fight, play around our wards. It's hard to win the complicated games consistently. Just uh, picking up on one of those points as we head into the draft in full. Um, Counter-Strike never used to have strategical pauses or timeouts. Mm. It then got introduced. It's now become a staple part of the, the scene. It's part of what you do. Yep. Would you want to see it in Dota? Uh, it'd be very difficult to enforce. I don't think so. I think you could have one timeout each, a strategy timeout yep. that you could you could do at no, any time after the, five I minutes. Think, I think the problem with it too is like, You'd have to be like, okay, you can only use it during these times. You can't use right. it before a team fight. What if a team is about to smoke into another yeah. team? There's, I think there's too many ways yep. that that can abuse. Can abused. And yep. you can't, you can't quite, like a ref can't be like, pause. Right. But, the, but forget, forget about the, the, the implementation, because I agree, the implementation would be tricky. But if there were a way of finding, say that's all been solved, and actually you're not allowed to do it during team fight, you can only do it when there's been a minute of no action or whatever. It, would it add or subtract from the beauty of the game? I think it would subtract. Yeah, because yeah, I, I think too. the beauty of the game is that, like for me anyways, when I watch Dota, it's uh, there's nothing that gets me as hyped and excited. And it's like a... Yeah. It's, it's part like of a, the skill, isn't yeah, it? It's, it's a part, dance. It's part of the... Yeah, exactly. It's live. Yeah. It's yeah. happening in front of you. It's, you part, can't, it's part of the I, brain power you time, are required to look, do the game. Timeouts would have taken complexity up a tier, okay? <laughs> if I could have just had us all chill, like, and I actually had time to be like, all right, you do this, you do this, relax. We can't, we're gonna do this, this, this. We're gonna win, no problem, guys. We've got it scripted. The reason the game is hard is because you have to do it on the fly. Right. You've gotta be last hitting, while minding your position, yes. looking around the map at potential opportunities. Are you safe, blah, blah, blah. It, it's, it's supposed to be hard. Yep. Yeah. I it agree. takes away from the strategy aspect of it because the game is unlike any other because you have to consistently think the same way throughout the course of a 60 minute game potentially that's so mentally fatiguing. If you were to take the time to be like, okay guys, let's collect our thoughts. I, by the way, think that we should play this way. I feel like it takes you out of that rhythm. Right. And the best games for me but, are the but, ones but that are I, sloppy. I would agree with that, Will, but that yeah. happened in Counter-Strike as well. And some teams reacted well to timeout, some reacted badly. The difference is you have a break in between you rounds. Yeah, there is so natural, you're just extending it. Break. Dota, yeah. it's it's zero to 60. Like, Absolutely. There's no break. And no, I agree. I think that's also why you look at Dota players, like our attention spans are ruined because, you know, you can play certain games and talk to someone, but your family members, your significant others, your friends eventually figure out, like, no, if you're in a game of Dota, yeah. like, sorry, I can't talk right yeah. now. No, Even you're right. if you're dead, yeah. you're still having to marshal your pubs in the hopes that they don't throw. Like, you, there, it is 100% focus, and, you know, you pass eight hours right. easily. We're talking about focus. Let's focus on the draft right now. We've got two uh, picks aside. Uh, Lesh Lifesteal opener from Mineski and uh, oh. an early Razor from Fnatic. That's to counter the uh, life stealer, and this must have been planned because giving up life stealers, especially in this meta, I think, makes the game pretty hard. Like this hero, really? Whenever he's strong, I think whenever life stealer is strong. Like, do you remember um, it was Manila Major? Yeah. Where uh, MVP Gauntlet, would Death just pick it all the time. Yeah. Major. That that hero for me, anyways, like when it's good, it's it feels just impossible to deal with lane wise. Yeah. He doesn't really lose any lane matchups. Like you don't really struggle that hard. Your comeback mechanic strong. The rage TP is just a better version of spin TP mm. in some ways because you can uh, you can be more aggressive with uh, fighting with your team. Open wounds is just a really good spell. You have one of the best lane sustains in the game in your passive with feast, so you never have to go back to base. This hero overall, like when we thought of the term dead lane hero, like when Bulba thought of it, I thought of it as a hero that just couldn't be moved out of his lane. Like a guy that just sits there, just tanks, nobody wants to gank. And what, it, what that does, Paul, is it opens up information on the map. If you don't have to deal with that one guy, you know that they're gonna always be in the other two lanes. So as a team, you give your life stealer a bit of a lead, then you just, you, you go around, mess around in the other two lanes. And as a result, you can potentially win three lanes on the back of this hero. The downside, however, while all of that is great, I think the most picked highest win rate carry at the mm -hmm. moment for a reason. I believe if you have an anti-carry combined with some sort of cleanse, save, peel mechanic, you can deal with Lifestealer because he still gets kited very yes. hard. And if you can kite through the rage or negate the rage, that's why I love Wyvern against Life Stealer as an example, because you can ult him during range, just kill him after. Same with Razor. If you get the link on Life Stealer, it doesn't matter how strong he is, he's going to have to run from you. And that's what's necessary. A way to stop the Life Stealer and a, something to actually now push him away from you and create fear in his eyes. Because when Life Stealer is running rampant, the 
that that's when the hero looks unstoppable because he's got a built-in BKB with an attack speed steroid, his own disable. It's just it's kind of dumb. You hear that, Austin? All teams have to do just build four step low. That's a good. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm super, super surprised that Nyx's Assassin is still in the pool. Uh, I thought that hero was like, it was just getting stronger and stronger. Yeah. On top of that, uh, I think that it's yeah. like, it's good versus Lifestealer in some way in that you have an invis opening initiation that you can actually gank the Lifestealer with. And then it's also good versus the Leshrac. I'm kind of surprised that this hero made it not just through the first four picks, but even to the it's, second bands. But it's such a, it's so grim into both of these openers. I know it's nice against Lesh, but it's just such a poor hero against Lifestealer because you just get raged on and there's no real mechanic you can utilize to save yourself. As a support, and, yeah. You but, can, like, but as a support, like, your job is not necessarily to be lane against this Lifestealer, right? Your job sure. is to be able to provide some way of controlling him. So yeah. being able to have a way of being able, like, this Lifestealer can't just mindlessly go down lanes and say, like, I'm going to be fine because I can just quick reaction. Well, the thing is, you, the problem is you can't get the hit off reliably. Because yeah. you will you, be well, you're not going to hit. You're going to inhale if you can't get, there, right? I think if you can't get the hit yeah. off, you, yeah, you, don't exactly. have the, you don't have the damage. Like that's the that's I think the part with Nyx is like his natural skill set and the way that you level you just you're not as high of the DPS as a support. No, you're more I, like I get a team it. Fighter. I get it. It just this this just isn't an ideal Nyx game, and I don't think the teams value that hero on the same tier as a lot of these other earlier picked supports. A la Bane. I agreed with you, fool. Yeah, I know. Okay, okay, we're in this together. Run and die. But, uh, yeah, so exactly right here, like Wyvern, like the exact hero I'm talking about, where you can. Heal put under the target that Lifestealer is going for. You can ult him through the rage. A Razor walks up and links him. And like Lifestealer is no longer in the game. And this is how you deal with this hero. Obviously, he can still get the Midas Radiance early and become a real force. But at least Fnatic, like, you have the tools to deal with these, this hero. And now Mineski have to think, okay, do we double down on the Lifestealer? Do we just, you know, you look at like OG. Sometimes they'll, they'll have a troll into a Razor. But the troll has like an Invoker and a Magnus and a Wolf next to him. And he doesn't really give a damn because... You're not going to drain his damage fast enough. We've, I think uh, we've talked about the, ti uh, the uh, tiny a little bit throughout this week. Um, they are the most flexible of teams. They have this, uh, oh, that's, a, that's, that's so sick against Razor because he's a move speed dependent hero. So that right there helps your life stealer. Now, when you find those kills, those bombs, you have an invis hero for delivery. You have extra gold per kill, and you can kite. You can juke this Razor, run away from the link. The whole team's gonna have this massive move speed advantage. And I love the synergy with heroes like Leshrac that are very tempo-based. Like, it's gonna be Core Lesh, I hope. I really hope, because yeah. that's that's such a sick combo. I'd imagine that uh, the reason you take Wyvern here is because uh, it's also just good against the burst damage that Lifestealer provides. I and mean, probably one of the most annoying things is you get Lifestealer bombed as a Razor and you just die in two seconds anyways yeah. to the Radiance. Uh, now you have a way around that with the wyvern, so that you can never just get hopped on. Yep. Because you just yeah, assume that you just you just assume that Maneski's going to pick some sort of like uh, instant DPS bomb vehicle. Track doesn't work that way anymore, by the way. The AOE movement speed—it's only for himself. Ten seconds remaining. Really? Yes. Kyle just got everyone gets extra gold, but you don't get the extra movement speed. Anymore. Well done, Austin. I've now switched allegiance back to you. <laughs> I don't trust you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust that handshake. Interesting. Well, that'll. That's gonna have to be a core battle. I mean, I, everything else, like, I, I still like everything that you said yeah. before. I just wanted to point that out. Well, uh, it's cool to have bounty against Wyvern as well, because the to win fights Smineski, right? You're gonna need to get the Wyvern. You need some method of acquiring vision and getting on top of him first, because yeah. otherwise fights become near impossible. They need a jump hero pretty bad, though. Yeah. They need a jump hero real bad. I say, uh, aww. Don't say Storm. That's adorable. I think I would take Storm. Of course, you nah, like, take Storm. Nah, legit. I'm not even trying to troll. Like, I know, if, I, know I knew it. I, it's a good game for as it. Long as, Fnatic, as long as Fnatic don't, uh, like, even Razor Storm is, yeah, it's annoying, but, like, the, the worst part about it is that you have, like, 285 boost speed or something on my boy. Storm Storm is a traditional hard counter to Life Stealer, though, because yeah. you build uh, Orchid naturally, you build Hex naturally. He can't actually stun you. Wait, you want Storm for who? I want Storm for Maneski. You want for Maneski, Yeah, right? that's what I thought. It could work for both teams. I guess, but... If it was True. a good hero and not absolutely <laughs> garbage to <laughs> as a hero. Just watch them pick my boy. You notice Blitz doesn't play pubs anymore, folks. I do all the he time. He does. <laughs> I do. I'm on the grind right now. Five position dazzle right here. He complains wow. to me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> my European His friends, Euro what would you European. like to play? Yeah. Yeah, he's made a lot of friends in the Lebanon and Turkey, I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So for Fnatic, they just banned out Kunkka. 
Do you go uh, your support here? Do you th I, I think it's just going to be support tiny for DJ. Take your off laner for ice. Maybe a Legion commander? Okay. Oh, that's tiny. core tiny. Or, yeah, because didn't or, you want the razor into the life lane? It's, it's core tiny. And then Cut the core wyvern. wyvern. Didn't you want the razor? <laughs> okay. Give me it's, that storm. Yes. Ideally, uh, but I'm concerned because if Mineski do this Bane Lesh support duo, I don't know if you can really contest a Lifestealer tri lane, even with a Razor in it. It, it could be very difficult to stay alive. So you wanted initiation, but you also want like a harder carry than Lifestealer, right? Because Lifestealer does not feel great here against a Razor, I, against I want, a Wyvern, even a PA. Give me, give me like a Tinker or something. Give me a Moon game winning hero right ah, now. Tinker sounds, Marana. Tinker actually no. sounds kind of like. Like a massive damage, a magical <laughs> damage beast that Jackies. scales probably would do with some good wave clear and i want something with mobility that's why i liked the it storm, like storm the spirit. <laughs> it yeah. does sound like storm spirit to me because because you need something that can strike right you have bounty life stealer you have all this reach you need something that can get dirty quick because otherwise your bane they're gonna be take storm bounty is like the dying. e home combo these guys know it's storm it's just no. lock it in if watch my boy get picked kyle's about to get slapped in the face by logic they could also do some weird like Venomancer, just. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> oh my God! Kyle actually just got dumped on. <laughs> Called it in. I agree with you. I just dumped on. Oh my I God! Told, wow. I even ranted before. I put my reputation you on the line. He said you were gonna get slapped in the face by logic, and you did. That could have backfired so hard. I was, but he so, was so arrogant, confident. but I was so right. That, dude, you should play the lotto today, man. What the? <laughs> I don't think the Lolo involves skill. That's a once-in-a-lifetime call right that was there. Skill. That's never going to happen. Yeah, no, 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 Kyle, 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 I'll tell you, this is the way you fall back on this is now you go, yeah, but it's not a winning hero. Mineski's going to lose. Yeah, That's all you have to do now. All in on that, and then we'll, uh, you know, we'll Besides, we already think that Fnatic is a better team than Mineski, so you've got a very solid back yeah. line to just be like, but, whatever, it's a bad man, hero. It wouldn't have won them the game. The problem is I'm super high on Moon, and if anyone's going to win MVP, if, any, if anyone on this team will shine on this hero. Like this, Storm's your win condition, okay? Might not be my favorite, but if he gets to like four items and he's ever top net worth after 30 minutes, I would bet on the Storm. That person with the sign knew. It was like, I was gonna call that 100%. They had faith in me. We placed the sign in the uh, in the crowd at exactly the right moment in the time. I tell you what, right? We should get this game underway because if it's as spicy as the, the stuff that's going on on this panel, we're in for a good first game. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ourselves ready for a fantastic Southeast Asian showdown between two of the hottest teams from that region, Fnatic versus Maneski. A good game, Red, I'm sure we will have. We've already got some exciting picks. The Moonstorm Spirit oh. coming in clutch, just like Blitz's prediction. I mean, what do we reckon, Fog? Is this a beautiful game for a Storm? It looks like a pretty good Storm game. Very limited disables on the side of Fnatic. They've got Curse to set stuff up. Besides that, though, they've got, like, Snowball, the Punch, and then Tiny, tiny Spells are the most reliable to actually get the Storm. But, yeah, it looks pretty good for Moon, but we've seen this hero struggle so much. However, in this game, too, he does have vision aspect too, right? He's got the bounty hunter who can get vision and find that wyvern in the back lines, which will be the target that Moon wants to go for with that infested life stealer. So yeah, looks like a pretty good looks like a pretty good storm game. As long as he doesn't just get crushed and then yeah, we'll find out if the hero's actually any good or not. Oh, we will. We'll see if uh, it's in a better place. Obviously, with those recent changes, making it a little more favorable to use the remnant at the early levels with that reduced and now scaling mana cost. Over on the side of Fnatic, we've got some interesting stuff going on as well. Ice 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 on the Razor. So sort of taking it into a bit of a different position than we have seen, uh, of course, the majority of teams oh, use this hero. And do you think this was the plan all along with Fnatic's draft, or is this an alter, uh, you know, cha making, making changes regarding what Mineski drew up against them? Probably just making changes. They probably just want the Tiny in the mid lane. They want the Razor in an aggressive tri lane versus that Lifestealer. Lifestealer should struggle a bit up here, especially if they keep the three for the time being. They'll probably switch, though, as they don't want, they want, like, don't want to completely sack MP down bottom versus a Bounty Hunter plus a less Shrek. Yeah, MP entirely on his own. So, as you say, we'll, we'll surely see at least one come through. They 
They are ready to make movements from mm -hmm. the lanes to the lanes and already, yeah, there comes the, the first TP as expected. Yeah. Jabs to join MP down here, make sure that there's that extra bit of safety to should, allow him to farm. It should still be a very strong dual lane up top for Fnatic to put the pressure onto that lifestealer. Just, you know, you're versus Razor, you're not going to have a good time as lifestealer. Even if you have a Bane, it'll try to help a bit, but yeah. I haven't gotten to see Tusk actually since, uh, since all these nerfs. I don't think we've got this. We got the cast one, have we? I don't think so. I don't think so. Not in the, the games that we've covered, at least. No. But it, it's still a fundamental. You know, fundamentally, this hero has a lot of tools that are incredibly powerful. The ability to save with the snowball, the, the sort of the reach, the catch, the initiation he can provide for a team as well. Sure, the numbers have changed, and and tag teams not want what it once was, but it's still a very powerful hero in the right hands. And being a being out of DJ's hands, you can absolutely expect to see DJ pull us some huge plays. He still becomes the same hero, right? It's the nerfs at the low levels that really made this hero fall off a bit here. No, of course, you know, the strength the strength changes and, you know, people not being able to just have, like, 2,000 HP on these tusks so early on. But, yeah, once those levels build up, he'll definitely have that same same toolkit. See, DJ... This gives us a check mark. Check, I was no. going to say, yeah, so we're Confirms bang on with the us. analysis. Yeah, DJ trading some hits here with the tag team. But uh, yeah, that, I mean, that, that really is the big part. Tag team no longer is sort of that guaranteed first blood as it was for a, a pretty much entirety of a patch. Fabby. Bottom lane, Fabi getting jumped upon. They're slowing him down with the Arctic Burn. MP staying on top of him as well. Does have a stun to play with. He'll pop the stick charges. MP won't look to chase any further. Knows that Fabi has that level one stun. And uh, there's every chance that Fabi can simply look to stun upon himself if MP was to chase up to the high ground. KP's doing the build that we've been seeing more on these core bounty hunters as you get this, you know, just you don't even get your invis until maybe level four or so. Might even be able to skip it and just get more points in Shuriken. Just put the pressure on so you can farm. Mid lane, as we see, the Storm is doing excellent. Uh, just spamming the remnants, actually, at every single on For any creeps, pretty much, because of how much mana he does have. And Abed will find a DD rune, so that's going to make it a little bit tougher for Moon for the next few waves. Yeah, that's going to slow down the, the next few hundred gold and, and obviously slow down that bottle timing, which is ever so crucial for Moon on the Storm, as in particular in that mid lane. Every last hit for Abed here, more than likely. He's even going to put pressure on if Moon does step up too far. Uh, see if we can get an extra reach, and he's going to be able to grab a tree again as well in a couple of seconds. See with the remnants oh, nice. if uh, Moon can get some. He does manage to take a few still, despite Abed having the DD. It was good the way he played it, too. He just kept poking and poking and poking to make sure that Abed feels a little bit more risky to step up. And he even gets the range creep, too. So Moon, so yeah, it's not going to be too fussed that Abed got uh, essentially lucky with that DD rune up top, mm -hmm. as Moon is still able to find, find good farm against it. 15 for 3, 14 for 3. Keeping it very even in the mid lane. Lifestealer's still getting a decent amount of farm up here. Pi's doing a great job of securing that. 10 and 4 to the 11 and 5 of the Razor. Now the positioning of the lane is a bit harder here for Mineski, so they're going to try to pull the lane back so that the Lifestealer can actually get some last hits. Because when you're deeper down the lane versus a Razor, that's your big fear. You get the boots get caught by some type of shard and yeah, you're gonna lose all your damage and that's where the pressure comes out. Yeah, DJ doing a good job with that as well, making sure yeah. Pi couldn't get in position for the pull. So keeping him focused in on the lane. Once the levels are there, we may see them try and get aggressive, the two of them. Onto potentially Pi if he's, he's had a place they, they only really can rely on the sleep to sort of Ooh. hold back. Oh, an early static is gonna get broken, in fact, immediately as Ice 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 just shoots it a little too early where Arjun was able to keep the distance. Now he's just able to turn good nice shards though from DJ. Block off Arjun and Pilai die from being able to chase Ice 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 and he'll keep his Razor alive. That'd be very costly if he goes down up in this top lane. Their entire plan is to be slowing down the Lifestealer's farm. As we see, he does have to be careful. I mean, at the moment, Razor with the 3-3-1 movement speed, 3-7-7 on the Lifestealer. Uh, you've got to make sure that you, you get a little bit closer before you try for the Static Link, or you're, you're already having DJ setting up with the shards. Yeah. Moon checks bottom rune. Not there. Abed will get himself another one inside that bottle. See them hunting around for jabs. Jabs is... fully. Don't quite get the stun though, so Jabs will be fine. He's being very annoying with this side pull. He's actually just pulling this hard camp into even just taking one range creep as pie. And this time round though, the top lane Fnatic, they get away with it. Ice 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 and DJ able to close down onto Pile Light Dai. They're sort of the sleep on the razor, not enough to hold them back as they still have a, a great amount of damage to throw out from range. Bottom lane, February with the Diabolic Edict, trapping Jabs up in the trees. He'll strike back and get a kill on the board for Maneski as well. As the timing comes up for the Bounty Runes, Pi with the Sleep holds back one, will be able to grab the Bounty Rune, but Ice Ice is going to get a good static link. Snowball across upon him, DJ's out of mana, but he's got the tag team, doesn't need mana for the Ice Shards as they're slowly beaten down. Fnatic get a second kill on that top lane. Ooh, and the thing is that 
he gets the bounty rune, but he used his TP because he had just died before. So now it's just going to be the lifesteal left alone up top for a few moments. And Chajit will be pressured by this Razor. And looking towards the, the two mid laners, the farm continues to move on at a similar pace. 35 for 3 on Moon, 30 for 8 on Arbed. As we see Moon, he's also turned to, to start to just utilize the neutral camps. Wants to be a little bit more wary in the mid lane. At least make sure he's got the six, which he now has. So he has got that escape mechanism. If any sort of wraparound gamps came in from Fnatic, yep. and uh, you know this is a it's good for Moon. He, he managed to get the six before sort of any sort of DJ Tusk rotation came in. There wasn't really that early focus or pressure from Fnatic on the Storm Spirit. So he's got past one of the trickier parts of the game for a Storm. Yeah, definitely. And now he's making rotations. He's straight down bottom with a zipping onto MP. He's underneath the tower and with the burst. He's got, got enough damage. Cold Embrace won't save him. A great rotation there from Moon. As soon as he hits six, a very early one as well. Not one that you'll normally see Storms do, but he gets straight oh, into that safe lane. And he gets the kill. He's trying to clear this camp, and he's under vision. Abed's oh. ready there, Invis. Uh -oh. oh, this Invis could be pretty big for Abed. They don't expect it at all as he comes in with a combo onto Moon. As it looked to be a, a smart play from it, it was a risky play. I, you yep. had to sort of factor for the fact that Abed had left that middle lane. You were getting very low going for the camp, and of course, Abed. As uh, luck would have it, he had that invis room for the very easy setup, an easy kill for him to find onto Moon. It was, it's just a, it's a very risky play, because you can expect that them, them to have a lane ward, right? In, in most of these times, in most of these games, a lane ward is there by that six minute mark, so... Yeah. And Jabs was the one preparing that camp as well, so they were very keen on making sure that, like, we're stacking this hard camp, so let's make sure that we secure it. And Abed got, I think, majority of them? I think the Storm got one of the big creeps with the Remnant as he did die. And they give Pi the mid lane, since the storm's going to be rotating moon, rotating and jungling for the time being. See him come back towards the mid, same time as Pi. Getting harassed a little bit, they do get the sleep onto Arbed. He is pretty tanky, 1500 HP, so too much really for moon to try and beat for at the moment as a storm. DJ's even just sitting next to him just in case for that snowball. KP just continuing to trade and take the money from MP as much as he can. Still uh, level 5 on these two cores. Top two net worth on that bounty, though. Even though he's got less less less, less hits than the uh, PA, he's got 600 more net worth because of that death and just the constant pokes from that Janata. You can see a collapse here onto the bottom lane. Pylar die actually wrapping around aggressively, showing himself. He jabs an MP, start to play a little deeper behind the tower. Fortification was used as well by Mineski to keep the pressure on down here. They do see that Abed's slightly low on mana right now, but the rune's gonna be spawning. It will be top, so DJ will just claim that one. Abed does have a, he does have a mango and TP available if he wants to assist if they try to dive bottom, but now the rotation looks like it's gonna be heading toward the mid lane instead. They wanna try to push, punish this tiny. He's playing aggressive, Abed. We'll see if the wraparound gets there in time. He's already backing up. And, uh, Ooh, looks, looks like it's gonna be hard for them to grab him. He's doing the uh, edict on the tower, that tier one. He's oh, right he is, isn't he? Yeah. Yep, just trying to cut it. That's what we were talking about with this new edict. It's, it's a play that we've seen in the past and people talk about in like pubs and stuff. So nice, but very, very easy to pull off for him. As yeah. there's obviously going to be no reaction at all. So there's always going to be noticed. It's back towards bottom. AP trying to leave forward. They get the sleep out onto the Wyvern. See if the two of them have the damage to kill him off. Look at the good hit on him, bringing him down to half health. There's also a wraparound from Febby. Tries for the stub, but Jabs will not walk into it. So Jabs will be safe. MP has now hit the six, so he's got the coup de grace to hit back with that extra bit of crit. If Mineski do dive once again, sentry down in the lane as well, make it a little harder for KP to stick around and trade blows with the Phantom Assassin. And uh, particularly so once they have the phase boots on the PA, that extra armor, gonna make it a little harder for her to be harassed by the bounty. I did still doing great up top, to be honest, the Lifestealer. Level six, only 200 net worth behind Ice Ice Ice, who has two kills. Pretty damn solid. I mean, would you say sort of out of the lanes that was the, the sort of biggest surprise that the, this top lane did not really get phased at all by the, the presence of a, of a Razor and Tusk combo? I thought he would get slowed down a bit more. Pi did a yep. good job of securing the lane. Even though he did die twice, it's a really hard lane to actually not die in. You're versus Tusk. He's still a hero that if you take one step too far, one step out of position, you're going to get trapped. So yeah, overall, I'd, I'd say that's a pretty nice win there for Mineski in that top lane. Very even or a start, though. It really Pretty is. much zero across the board on gold and experience in these first 10 minutes. So that's... Yeah, making sure that Fnatic have no chance of having a look in towards this top bouncer. In fact, they're going to look to try and lead it onto Ice Ice Ice. He's got the static link on RJ. RJ will back away, break it, sleep from Pi, holds him in place. Febby doesn't want to go for the stun, though. He's backing off. With DJ around. 
Maneski don't want to poke any further, especially with Ice 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 popping the eye of the storm. They'll wait it out. Maneski can keep their distance. Battle for the rune. Moon sees it wasn't top, immediately ports that bottom shrine, is able to claim a DD. So they're still poking towards Arjit. DJ maybe seeing if he can find an opportunity to make a jump. He sees Pi Light Eye. That's the easier kill. Straight in with the snowball. Pi turns with the brain tap. Has a defensive sleep. The stone comes out from Febby onto our bed, but Pi is surrounded. The tag team out as well. We'll give Fnatic the damage to get the kill. The TP's in from KP. Track on Ty, 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 Trying to finish up Febby. Out comes the plasma field. The punch from DJ as well. They'll take two. They've only lost a wife. And will they lose anything more? KP trying to chase towards DJ. has got that track movement speed. He'll continue to take gold. The Ice 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 is by his side. DJ has has the snowball. He'll keep him safe for now. Arbed's also heading over. KP needs one more touch, but the shards come out. And that will allow TJ to shove himself back to safety. Down. KP's still trying to chase. He needs that touch with the cold embrace. Chaps, he's in there as well, saving DJ's. KP can't quite finish him off. As Fnatic, with some great team play, get the two kills and get out of there with only losing the Wyvern in uh, return for taking two lives of Mineski. As KP still hanging around Moon. Has also moved over. He just hit so hard on this bounty with that Janata level four. I've got the Fiend's Grip now ready to, to use on Pilot I Die. So that extra bit of control if they see a target from the high ground. They'll pop the, the smoke in an attempt to get close. I think that's a Blink Dagger now on Abed. So now he can be, it's a lot easier for him to be active. He's already been quite active, 2 0 1 on the, the Tiny, but with this, it's going to be so much easier for them to jump into those backlines and set up now for that Storm Spirit if he's actually in, out of position. And then they can have the follow up with the Tusk. MP. He's getting stalked here. Like you said, they do have the Fiend's Grip available. They can get in range. They can't, it seems. Nice, a little too speedy. MP, as he's able to slide himself away underneath the tower, and he's straight out of it. Doesn't want to mess around. TP's up top to the triangle. So continues to farm in a much safer area of the map. Bottom rune. This is a battle of runes for these two teams because they both have bottles on their mid laners. Is Abed. He's going to look for a, bit of a combo onto Moon. Not quite enough magical burst. In fact, Moon is starting to turn and poke a bit. He does have KP by his side, but KP out of mana, and they won't want to chase up to the high ground towards Fnatic. And he's got a haste run, right? It's like, <laughs> you're not going to kill this tiny. Okay, Ice 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 went for the boots or travel build. A very sort of different approach to, uh, to the raise. I mean, obviously, as the off laner. You know, Boosted Travel, there are certainly some offline heroes that we do see uh, Boosted Travel being prioritized. No surprise at all here. It's a clear 10 minute faster uh, than this patch is fastest on a Razor. I mean, that's, that's pretty much because this is, it has to be the first time we've seen a Razor this patch rush Boosted Travel. I can like, always just show up to the fights wherever the Lifestealer is, wherever they do have him. He's going to be there with that bots for the static link. It's kind of cool. Goes for some early stat items on top too. Just any type of yeah. stat. Just a crown, or casual crown, casual circlet. With that bracer and even a raindrop on top too, because there's raindrop is one of the more valuable items versus storms and tinies, because their damage is all about just like popping you, and if you're blocking even that like one or two instances of damage, it's quite massive for you. It's Febby, quickly clear out this tower with that edict. So they get a bit of pressure themselves up on the top tier too. So Ice 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 was able to bot up the creep wave, starting to hit the tower, trying to take over Mineski's jungle as well, and it will force Sarge it out of this area as. Fnatic pretty much have the entirety of their team up top. At the same time, Mineski, they're also moving in onto the tier two tower bottom. TP comes back already from DJ towards the tier three. We'll see if they're able to set up any sort of defense. Pi will walk in to break the smoke. He will at least see Abed on the tiny. Oh, Abed actually, as soon as he's in people, he just blinks straight up to the high ground. Knows Pi's there, Jabs get the vision. Pi will be able to get the sleep off. The rest of Maneski coming over to help him out. Back towards the shrine. The Ice 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 and DJ, they've caught Febby. They have the shrine here, but it's not enough to keep Ice 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 alive as they'll lose the raise. And DJ also critted down by KP with the Janata. They'll turn towards Moon. Moon wins his curse by Jabs. Abed bottling up. Now he's going to throw the tree out as well. It's enough to finish off Moon. The timing there, perfect. From Jabs with the Splinter Blast to follow that Winter's Curse, getting the kill. That's now a pie. Oh, it's not done yet. Arbet tried to blink forward, but an instant Fiend's Grip comes out. The chain stuns there from Febby. Do they have the damage he's to kill Arbet? They do. They'll get Arbet. It will cost them Moon's life. But quick reactions there from Pi. They had the vision on the high ground, I believe, with the sort of the precast of the Fiend's Grip. Had Arbet as soon as he blinked in. Those type of situations are great, right? They've got they've got a bounty hunter. Seven for six. Fifteen minute runes are coming up. We'll see Maneski. KP's already set up for the one down here. That was Maneski making an aggressive move with their lifestealer farming the whole time. So Midas was finished, he got a Midas off, and yeah, like we were saying, KP with that track, they got some track kills. It's definitely a good trade there for Maneski. 
top. Yeah, managed to find a grab here on Tai Tai Tai. They've Again. got more than enough magical damage there from Moon. The two of them and the sort of combos that we can expect to see down the line. The Storm being the potential for that Life Stealer bomb. The vessel to drag Arjit around the map and get him involved in the action. Mm. And as you say, with the rate of farm that he's getting, he's going to get the Midas Radiance. That early combo finished very, very, uh, very quickly this game. Yeah, and even though he's versus a Razor, you're going to have that Radiance damage that's always going to be annoying. And you're going to, you have a uh, vehicle. You actually have two vehicles to be able to bring you inside yep, of those team yep, fights excellent. to prevent that like link from building up. You can just get that fight started and blow up the Razor, hopefully, before oh, it. They're going to drive the combo. Arbet's there with the lead-in. It's going to buy time for the boost to travel. Ice, Ice, Ice to join the fight. Has the static link down. The shards blocking off Arjit as well. As Arjit will pop the stick charges. He's cutting his way through the trees. He needs backup, That there's no backup inbound. He'll try to continue to run. Toss forward on the creep. We'll give them vision. Arbet has the blink backup in with the avalanche. They'll get themselves the kill. Same time, tracks onto MP. He sets up for Moon to zip in, but he had to use the entirety of his mana pool, so cannot chase any further. But again, they're making moves. When they're having one situation happen, they're making moves elsewhere. Mid lane's being pushed in, and Febby also is just going for bottom tower. He's, he's not gonna only, get it. He's gonna get it easily here. The Edict pretty much brings it all down. Mid he almost lane, has a full mech on left. GJ, they look towards Moon. We saw Moon already trying to commit for the PA using all his mana. He stuck around in the lane, so now he's got no mana to get away with. As Fnatic's in, they'll kill off Moon and Jab's already hunting for more. KP will turn, go for the track. Febby tries to go in with the stun, but there's no numbers here on Fnatic as they'll surround Febby the Cold Embrace, keeping Jab's alive for now. Oh. Febby will still be able to burst him down with the Pulse Nova. The magical damage will finish him off despite the Cold Embrace. As both teams really kicking off now. 10 for 8, 3k lead for Maneski. The life steal is certainly going to become an issue. We'll see MP still looking toward the Battle Fury, has the Demon Edge. 1k gold on top of it. They need a bit more time, really, for Fnatic compared to what Maneski has. As Maneski are just playing uh, with a lot of aggression. We've seen them time and time again moving over to Fnatic's half of the map. Fnatic are being able to punch back. But for now, Maneski getting the slightly better of the trades. Yeah, they're keeping pre the thing is that they're keeping the pressure on. It's Fnatic, they've made that one aggressive move top, but it's on it. It's on their side of the map. Maneski's just pushing all the lanes out constantly and making Fnatic play a bit of a responsive game here. Quite a stat there indeed for KP. Now, 15 minutes, the 10th highest on a bounty hunter in all pro games since TI5. He's certainly having a good time in phase. Yashi Drums going for the, the S and Y. He's going to have a lot of stats. It's going to be a beefy, a beefy uh, bounty hunter. And, and already you're going to start to see the, the net worth start to, to barrel in their favor. If they can continue to find track kills, it's going to help keep Maneski well ahead. Especially if he's, if he's able, able to get those levels. If he can get that level 12 online, that's the big one we look at. Because level one track, allies bonus gold is 40. But that level two, it's 80. And you also get yourself up to 250. So it really starts to make a significant difference. KP, of course, on his own. He's, doing a, yeah, he's having a great game, though. 4 0 one. Not be able to do anything about ice ice He can set up vision-wise. What's the big uh, sort of backup you look towards is Moon bringing in the Life Stealer. That's uh, Ice 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 has backup behind him. Some TPs coming to the shrine as yeah, KP leaves that top area. Looks to rejoin the rest of the team. Febby is he's just constantly already, been down. He's already becoming a core. Look at his net worth. He is getting close to that Razor and the PA. Just and the, sit, the, parked himself down here. Yeah, look at the build as well. So the mech into the BKB. A bit of a different approach on the Lesh. And uh, no yeah. surprise again, one of the fastest that we've seen this patch on the mech timing. It's not the standard build from Febby, but he's getting at a very good speed. I mean, he's got so much mana anyway, right, as this hero. He's got, now got 18 armor as well on top, so he's always going to have that. It gives his team a lot more team fight in comparison. You look at the side of Fnatic, who's going to build this mech? Absolutely not. I mean, yeah, as you say, you've, nobody who can. You've, you've got four cores at the moment on Maneski down to how far Febby is. Mm -hmm. And look at how they're distributing their farm. You see the left right constantly pushing in bottom wave. Moon's even playing kind of near him and farming the enemy jungle, and they're all just farming. You see Fnatic, they're frantically moving around the map to try to make plays to respond to Mineski at the moment. Yeah, they should have a good shot at taking down Febby here as they are bringing in four heroes. Febby will pop the mech. Toss will be there, though. They surround Febby. They bring him down, but then Febby was five. So it's five heroes ganking a support. Sure, you get the kill, but it's a lot of resources. And Febby, he's been sat down here a lot, a long, long time. So he's just making so much space. You know, KP's farming the mid lane, top lane as well. You have Mineski easily finding the farm for Moon. It's, it's the space that Febby's creating. Is, it, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. Fanatic's trying to make a quick move. They had this ward in the jungle, so they were watching Moon farm, and then he went to the lane, but he is going to be aware of that one. That's Moon. Very close, about 500 away from having the Orchid. He's going to look to try and take that top wall bouncy rune. And Ice 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 will be able to grab it before Moon's able to do so. Mm -hmm. Jabs' positioning is 
massive in this game. You can see he's actually just going for like HP items as well, not going for some type of like four stat or glimmer because he's versus that bounty hunter. So he's assuming I'm probably going to be seen in a lot of these fights anyway, so I have to do whatever I can to survive my best. Because in the fights, we are talking about how the Life Stealer has that, you know, he has that method to just jump in. But if Jabs is there, he can get the curse, and they have the curse into the Link follow-up. And that's where the fight can become very problematic, if they are able to actually get that combo. Not middle again, KP. He has a DD in his bottle, too. He is underneath uh, a sentry ward, so we'll have to be a little careful that DJ and MP come across. Moon's going to reveal himself, but straight away they jump, and Moon's able to get the zip off before the avalanche is there. Quick reactions from Moon will mean that he avoids a, a four-man gank attempt upon him, keeping himself safe. See extra initiation potential now going to be there from DJ. He's got the completed bling. And, Much easier uh, way to catch. The, the save as well. Yeah. They are going to have that potential to get in and save whoever gets dove upon Moon again. Quick, quick reactions, dodging the avalanche every single time as this storm. He's got a full orchid now too with the Kaya, level 15. This is a very scary time for Fnatic. How's Ajit doing? Very close to, I think, yeah, as soon as they've got Radiance, I think just go for Infest plays. They yep. are super strong on the side of Mineski right now. Hey, they do find KP, Fnatic. As he heads up to the high ground, Sentry placement's been on point for Fnatic. Across their half of the map, it makes it very hard for KP to get over. Five heroes again. They just keep bringing every single possible thing to respond and look where to Fabi Mineski. Is. And then I mean, he's just yep. chilling down bottom. He's pushing the wave right up to the tower. He's, he's nearly got enough money for that Mithril Hammer. The BKB is going to come at a very quick time for this support. Less track. Febby continuing to have a, a very juicy game in terms of gold. Yep, they're doing a good job of dictating the flow and just like we were saying, forcing reactions from Fnatic. But it's not like it's it's not like some like huge lead or anything. It's still it's incredibly close. Two K experience is actually pretty much just bouncing around zero as well. Yeah, a lot of it's going to be sort of down to how much you can believe in the PA. I mean, we've seen sort of PA. Just as the game goes on in close games, you get a good crit or two, suddenly people are getting one shot. Mm -hmm. Sure, the Battle of Fury from timing from MP, it, it wasn't amazing. It was, I believe, it, it sort of two minutes slower than the average in this patch. Uh, but he, he's got it. He's working towards that Mansa style. And oh, it came up there. So it was, yeah, two minutes 46 slower than the average of uh, this patch. But he has got it. The game isn't in a sort of terrible state for Fnatic, so it will pay off. Yeah, but we'll see how much, as you say, Maneski can step it up now with that Radiance complete on RJ. It's go time. Which one does he want in fast? Does he want to go inside of KP or does he want to go inside of You want to go with the Storm? I mean, probably inside of Moon, yeah. So go for the smoke. See what sort of approach they are able to take. As smoke on this, smoke. This would be a pretty good place to move in. There's only two at the moment at Fnatic up top. But they are standing close to the tower. KP leads in. The blur. MP does have the blur, but they will now see him. Wards are dropped down. TJ goes for the, for the dust. In fact, he's going to jump forward onto Pile I Die. Arjit looks towards them on the side as he's on top of Ice Ice Ice. That's going to be Ice 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 dead. The snowball from DJ comes in across onto Moon, but Moon, he's still got mana to play with. Zip to the side. Looks to pull in Arbet. Arbet tries with the toss. It's not enough damage to kill Moon. The Winters curse is down, though. That will keep Arbet the safe. They're falling low. Spinner Blast comes out as well. They get an avalanche out. Arbet, he's falling though. He tries to the punches with the Echo Saber. It's not the much. Moon survives. And he'll now turn towards Japs as Mineski. Clean up another fight. The dream fight for them, right? It was Fnatic just not having every single hero there at the same time, and they get the jump. He tossed up the Razor, actually. He didn't get the perfect one, and MP just gets full duration gripped on the side from Pylite Die Did and it. Febby, and just gets killed. A beautiful executed fight by Vineski, and we'll see. Just, it was the item titans. They it really just was. got everything. They got the Radiance. Everything sort of came together. It was sort of split up at the start for now. You see DJ and MP throwing daggers and attempt onto Pylite Die, but it's on the side here where the real trouble's happening. Ice 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 just getting immediately eliminated from the fight, and then Fnatic just falling too low to continue to play. And in fact, back already, Maneski, they're looking to go again. Long they turn jump. towards Ice Ice Ice. He's got the Shrine here, but Moon's got the control, pulling him in, and Arjit, with this Radiance, just burns through the Razor. As 8k lead suddenly, suddenly begins to blossom here for, for Maneski. They're Damn. getting further and further ahead. The game is speeding up. Instead of even going for the BKB on Fabi, he's like, screw it. I can just go for the Greaves. Bring, give my team even more team fight. I don't really need to worry about all this, like the magic damage at this point. It's an 1860 uh, HP less track with 22 armor. Yeah. He is a core. Yeah, at this point, as you said, a tiny combo is it's not going to get anywhere near close to killing no. him. It is seeming incredibly problematic right now for Fnatic. They need to have they need to have their numbers all there if they do want to try to take those fights. And that last one, like I was saying, Jabs was bottom. He TP'd to the fight pretty late. They got caught off guard trying to set up versus Mineski. Do have those bounty runes coming up? We will have three. Looks like it's going the way of Mineski. 
I mean, what do you sort of think of this decision as well from uh, the PA this game? Going for the Mansa style, is, is that is that you you don't want a BKB BKB? What doesn't do enough? I mean, you're against a storm. Is there? Still not temptation for MP? Why the Mansa? I mean, he definitely still wants it, but there's a lot of things to dispel this game. The track, the, the orchid. orchid, it's very annoying. Even sure. the open wounds, there are quite a lot of them, but he definitely, he absolutely He's gonna needs still a need a BKB as well, right? Yeah. Mid lane, KP. Probably just wanted to be a little bit greedier, but now he's very, very squishy and very susceptible to what Mineski has. He's 1400 HP on this PA. Yeah, if they get on top of him and uh, able to sort of drag him in with the Vortex, it's gonna be more than enough time for them to kill him. At this point, KP, did you get tracks out, jabs? Rose out a sentry in reaction to that track being that. They've just got to somehow keep the game going. They've got to make time and space for, for the PA to, to get that get that Manta and, these, and then, then an item on top of it. And also for sort of ice size size to, to get himself back in as he is, he's, he's fallen off. This isn't this isn't a flashy ice size size game at all for him on his razor. No, definitely not. I bet he tries to get the touch back. We're gonna see the attempt here from Fnatic to start something onto Febby. Febby is tanky though. He has the Greaves ready to pop. Dagger will be thrown in or pop the Greaves. Toss comes out, but they, they're still hesitant on sort of committing. They know that there's heroes behind. They can't, oh my God. They can't kill the support less. He's a core. He's become a core. He's become a core. <laughs> I mean, he really has. Febby is just impossible for them to deal with. He took all the space, right? He just put all that pressure on bottom. And it's been Mineski just dictating the flow still constantly. Fnatic tried to make an aggressive move, but yeah, just too tanky now at this point on this slash. 10k gold, 7.5k experience, and they're keeping the aggression on. Look at Moon. He is about, he has his full Lincolns being delivered out. Now two, level 20 picked up. See Mineski. Leading in, sentries continue to be laid down on the ground. Ice 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 goes forward. Try and commit themselves onto KP. Toss forward as well, but KP's got the movement speed to get so out of there. Turn the track and able to, he's been able to run away. 546 movement speed when he is next to that track target without even clicking the phase boot. So with phase, absolutely hasted up. Uh, maybe a bit of a uh, sort of a miss call there as well as they sort of committed with the Avalanche and the Yule Scepter yeah. at the same time. So a uh, bit of an overcommitment there from uh, Ice 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 with the item, item usage. Yeah, they don't have the greatest, like, straight up, like we are mentioning, it's a good Storm game. They don't have the greatest type of lockdowns or even, like, their team fight. Their team fight is very reliant on Jabs getting some huge curse and then having some follow-up Avalanche. It's not like they have this, like, mag PA combo where you no. can just, like, RP them or anything like that. It's much harder to execute. And the PA has been slowed down heavily. Has the Manta finished up after that Battle Fury. Also hits level 18 now, too, but... Mineski are just so farmed on all their heroes now. Except for Pi, but he doesn't need to. KP, he's gonna walk up to the high ground, sentries are down, they'll try and turn up the combo, but Mineski, they're ready to fight. They'll dive in straight away, Orkin but this is KP is gonna be kept alive. DJ pops the snowball in an attempt to bite some time as they'll look towards KP. KP's still surviving, KP, he's able to walk out. They've lost DJ, they've lost Jabs as well. The buyback's coming out for both the supports in an attempt to help Ice Ice Ice, but Ice 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 is already dead. As Mineski again killing off three. KP does at least finally die and does have to buy back himself, but it's another team fight that Mineski are just easily coming out on top of. Another, I mean, Febby getting a double stun there. Actually, perfectly right after the snowball comes out, they got the Orchid on jabs, so this vision aspect we were talking about, they're going to be able to see this Wyvern a lot of the times in the fights, and easy pickings for Mineski is... Now they're going to go for this tier two. And it's starting so in a strong. way where normally you would expect it to, to work out for Fnatic. I mean, KP just sort of walking up to the high ground as a bounty, but they, they, can't, they, they can't kill him quick enough. Mm -hmm. It's too scary. They know that every time Moon's going to be there ready to react, likely to have Argent inside him as well. It's, they just uh, have to commit so much because their damage is just not really quite there yet on their lineup. The no, PA not, is, not until MP's ready. Yeah, the PA is not that massive just yet. Level 19, getting close. Has the BKB now queued up, but yeah. Yeah, before we're, we're going to start seeing Fnatic win fights, you need to see MP having the BKB, then pretty much an item on top of it. Yeah. And until then, Damage issues are going to be a massive problem for Fnatic against the tanky lineup and elusive lineup of Mineski. Yeah, and it's not like he went for this. You know, like he went for the Deso, which is like that big amplification of damage because of the corruption that you get as well at level 20, that minus four armor plus the Desolator. So he's gonna have yeah, just less damage to work with, but a little bit more survivability because of that Manta. Arcane Rune for Moon now is. I mean, he's already been crushing it without it, and now with this Arcane Kaya, we've seen the power of what Storm can do with this. Moon. It's going to show mid, but as we keep saying, not much at all that Fnatic can do about the, that. Even if it is Moon alone, they just cannot commit upon him. No way to lock him down long enough to find a kill. 
and uh, the risk is always there. You make a jump on Moon, there's going to be backup for Maneski behind him. A lot of pings coming out from both teams. If you see Fnatic moving out of the base of five, but they're being very tentative. Throwing daggers out, they really want to commit for this. They try and head forward. Moon's so going to be on ice, ice, ice. They have to be so careful, Fnatic. It's so hard for them to take a fight at the moment. They'll go for the Eye of the Storm, but the Fiend's group comes out from Pi. They hold Ice, Ice, Ice down. Moon's gonna zip straight across towards the backlash. He's punching Jabs the right, making sure that there's no chance for a Winter's Curse to come out, and Jabs is dead. DJ goes for the Snowball, but DJ, he'll also fall as they lose two on Fnatic. Ice, Ice, Ice will yield himself up, but the Mineski surround him. Moon is also able to help finish off another on the side as Arbed's down. Four dead on Fnatic. Maneski continuing to slaughter Fnatic as Fnatic just cannot fight back. They're not ready. I think that might have been four tracks as well, on top of just a 4 and 0 for the fight. As again, Moon. Oh, no, MP. He tries to jump out. KP goes for a bit of a poke. The bait is set and he jumps forward. He will be able to Manta off the Orchid, jumps across the Illusion. Moon is out of mana. So it's hard for them to continue to chase, but they may just have enough fighting power and they do. KP's in. Crits him down with the help of the track, and that's MP gone as well. Maneski team wiping Fnatic, moving up to the high ground. They're taking tier threes, they'll get at least a set of racks, maybe even more as they are at 20k gold lead. As Maneski, that storm pick working out absolutely perfectly. They played the pace of the game brilliantly. Fnatic tried with their lanes. The top lane, the, the, the Razor off lane did not go as well as they would have hoped. They could absolutely. not shut down this life stealer. As they've lost one set of racks, they look towards the second Maneski. Now a buyback comes out from MP. They've got the full roster back alive. Fnatic Arbe jumps forward with an attempt, but he immediately gets silenced. Turned around upon the other corner race and the Winter's Curse. Not a lot of damage though being taken by the Lifestealer. DJ jumps in with the punch, getting shoved forward as well. Moon goes in with a Vortex onto Arben on the side. MP and Ice Ice Ice, they're trying to kill Paladin, but they can't. Femi with a two-man stun holds them back. Ice will self-fuels himself, but he'll surely still die to the Diabolic Edict. The race is out. The rest of Fnatic desperately trying to get themselves back to the base. But they're all tracked. They cannot get close to Maneski. Maneski take the range, the melee racks down bottom. They'll get the range racks almost certainly surely as well. I mean, they'll play it safe. They don't need to rush for it. But GG indeed. It's caught. Yeah, it's over. It. Maneski in this game one looking to be just a, a million steps ahead of Fnatic. This was not a close match. No, not at all. They put the pressure on. Like I was saying, they, they dictated the pace of this entire game. And you can see it was Fnatic yep. frantically responding. Like you mentioned, like in the bottom lane, there was five heroes to show up when they went to kill the last track. Then when they went to kill the last again, it was four or five heroes. They kept bringing so many to try to respond to Maneski. And Maneski just split up the map and played the farm game. And they understood. They really did. We have a Storm Spirit versus Limited Disable. We can play this farm. and. None of our lanes really got shut down very hard. We did a great job in the laning phase and kind of ran away with it from there with just the vision aspect that KP can arrive. Absolutely. Right. This, this KP bounty hunter, sort of the, just the hero pick as a, as a whole. I mean, we sort of heard Pai earlier talking about some of the drafts that he hasn't been happy with. This is one that he has got to be very, very satisfied with. Getting KP on the bounty hunter is this hero that can afford to, to rely on just track gold to keep in the game. He doesn't need a lane. That's why you see Febby step up and just take over as this support turn core Leshrac. He ends the game 5, 4, and 12. They couldn't do anything about him. There were five-man ganks on this man, and they were still struggling to kill Bebby. Maneski, yeah. they just had a perfect game plan. The Storm Spirit final pick was an easy, solid cincher there for them to close up the draft. Moon of 7, 3, and 9. And Fnatic, they just couldn't get anything working. MP, he just needed too many items, and there was too little time. Yeah, I, I love that what you were mentioning there, just like having this bounty hunter and then having someone to absorb the lane afterwards. Because KP, he's going to move, he's a bounty, he doesn't want to farm in lanes, he wants to put pressure on, so Fabi just absorbed all that. Great itemization across the board from Mineski. And yeah, Fnatic just seemed a bit like they couldn't really do anything after the laning phase ended. Abed was having a pretty decent time, but they couldn't actually take any of the fights because Maneski just slowed the pace down and separated the whole map. And I think more reasons that as a draft, and now you really have to continue to increase the prioritization you have on drafting with regards to the less wreck. This hero, it gets through, and in sort of the right situation, you do just put him in a four, and this was a, a four in a different sense, because it is this support that does yeah. so well with items. Sure, he's great without them, his skill set's fantastic, but you give him a Greaves, you get him the farm to even just have the Oak Club on top, you, can't, you cannot kill him before you've taken so much area of damage yourself. Yeah, the Diabolic not... Edict, the Pulse Nova, sure, you might kill him, but you're gonna kill yourself in the process. And he did it. It's, we, he took up so much space in farming, and we didn't really point out, but like, his building damage, 7,841 at that end of the game, so. Yeah.
Well, fantastic draft and fantastic play from Maneski in this first game of the best of three series between themselves and Fnatic, as we'll pass you back to the panel for some post-game analysis. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, yes, we will be doing some uh, post-game analysis on this very desk. We've got Kyle, Blitz, and of course, Cap here, all ready to argue with each other incessantly, just like an SEA slugfest. Yeah. Great game. Great game. Yeah. Moon demonstrating why he's the best mid player in Southeast Asia. Okay. Was it not I like also? I, I like what you just did there. You, you just, he just took the conversation and he was like, it's going to go this direction, which is Moon is a great player and he won the he's, game. He's, you know, he's not to, about the heroes no, no, at all. No, no. He's, he's, trying to, he's trying to move away from the storms. No, I, look at the tape. I was, Storm was a good pick for both sides. I just didn't think a hero was good enough to win games. It's still a win condition when you're the top net worth after 20 minutes, yeah. which right. I said, we'll get that smug look. chill, look baby. I'm just saying see, I see, appreciate it. The thing you. is, right, <laughs> both of you win here. You don't realize it, but you both win. Will looks we like a god for calling out a storm oh. call, right? And he did it in the second phase, not even in exactly. the third phase. You look like a god because you've been on the moon MVP train. There we go. You yeah. both win. There we go. Look at that. Your brothers in wins. Uh, Cap. Yes, sir. Um, this wasn't about one hero or one player, actually, because they no. grouped up really well every time they wanted to do something in this game. I thought it was uh, pretty interesting. They have this uh, core bounty hunter, which um, I have been kind of skeptical of, yep. but also like kind of optimistic, just because with the the track changes and like how you're only get the one getting the movement speed, and then they also increase the fact that you're like you can actually do a lot of damage with this Janata strike that you're getting the extra damage you get out of that. Um, I, I wasn't sure if it could actually work as an offlaner consistently, but KP uh, certainly showed the strength of it here. Uh, but part of it is also the lineup, right? They have this great like ball lineup that is going to be able to guarantee kills. When you have a Storm Spirit jump on somebody with a Life uh, Stealer inside, that person gets, like, whoever is getting jumped on is dead, and it's a guaranteed track yep. kill for you. And to go off of that high reach, combined with uh, Febby itemizing, like, team support into BKB, everything just flowed. Fog said, you have this three Bounty Hunter, opens up space for your four Lesh to actually clear waves like he wants to. Febby was huge, and there's no real way for this draft to... Uh, Fnatic to contest, they just don't have the damage output, and they can't, like, Mineski, when they strike, four heroes on top of you, dealing full damage. What's the counterplay? Yeah, yeah, it was happening every time. Will, you've been very quiet, despite the fact that you've got plenty of room to gloat. Bass. So, nah, I'm a good winner. So, you know, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just silently, whenever the camera goes off of me, I just look at Kyle and I smile, and I know it gets him angrier. <laughs> Uh, was it? Was it? Um, I mean, obviously, it was a good storm game because it proved to be a st good storm game. But uh, did he have any trials in that game? Uh, I mean, he went for like he just kept trying to make plays, which I love mm -hmm. about Moon. You saw the one at bottom where he died, where you're yeah. trying to clear the stack out. Yeah. That's probably a little bit greedy. But overall, like he played this game really well. He didn't only rely on the life sealer bomb, which I absolutely hate when people do. They're just like, I always have to make that move. What he allowed was Ajit would start the fight and then he would zip in after. And the problem with uh, team fighting against Storm is if you don't have these like hard disables that you can save for him, it becomes so rough. Because you saw how every single fight starts. Abed throws out his stun, Jabs is already cold embrace somebody. So now by the time Moon comes in, it's free. Like you can you can sort of lift things out as your head in your start as a Storm Shirt player. I think to myself the only things that'll kill me is if I get Winner's Curse next to my Life Stealer, if I get stunned and comboed right after that. So if one of those two elements are removed as a Storm player, I'm thinking to myself, this is the freest game of my life. It's not the fact that having no stuns is what makes a free Storm game. It's right. how easy it is to play around their Jump stuns. Around. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right, thanks. Uh, that's the uh, the view from our panel members, of course. But uh, let's get uh, a look through the eyes of Purge as to what he saw in game one. Hey, the big moment that really blew the game up for Mineski was this team fight at about 23 minutes. Now, a precursor to what was happening before this, very consistently, Febby was split pushing out the off lane, and by doing that, it forces reactions from the enemy team. Fnatic, uh, this is Jabs, I believe. The winner Wyvern is forced to rotate and defend that. In the meantime, he's also pushing the mid lane. So what that means is that the map is spread out, and it makes it harder for Fnatic to know when the fights are going to start. And as a result, Mineski is able to smoke and go for this team fight that happened on the top lane where they ganked up the Razor. Now, Razor's quite survivable. He's got good movement speed. 
speed, but they already have an Orchid on the Storm Spirit, so all they need to do is initiate on him and ideally kill. And importantly, they put an Observe Ward and a Sentry Ward in the area, so they know that KP is unlikely to be spotted by a Sentry themselves, and they have Vision of Razor. Now, what happened at the same time that they went on the Razor was DJ used his Blink Dagger to jump in and hit Pyla Die in the back lane. He thought Pyla Die was a threat, and he actually wasn't, so he lost both of his Blink Dagger on DJ, as well as the ability to Blink in and Snowball and save the Razor. That was a huge mistake, but it happened at virtually the same time, so not entirely DJ's fault. And as a result, they're able to force down and burst down the Razor at the start of the fight. Here's DJ snowballing in to try to save him. That doesn't work either. Um, another fault there. And as a result, they're able to get three track kills, four kills total in this team fight. And on the right side of the fight, PA's been trying to fight this whole time, but Pilot is able Pilot Eye is able to disable her for like 10 seconds, then Febby comes in running from the mid lane to guarantee that kill as well. So four total kills, three total track kills, and they got like three to 4,000 gold out of this fight because of it. Yeah, Slick of Urge. Uh, yeah, one of those uh, big reasons as to why that was a, a top 10 performance by KP on that uh, bounty as well. Very, very fast in terms of the gold in that game as well. Um, overall, uh, disappointing for Fnatic, Kyle. They're going to have to bounce back. They've looked great through this time, other than that one in the upper bracket, so what made them look pretty average in this game? I'm uh, glad you asked, because I think you look at the draft and the last pick, Tusk, right. is a great example. It's just a very simple draft concept and not what you would ever see, I think, a team like Secret pick. You, you have a tiny mid, mm. an Ice Razor off lane, then you have MP, traditionally like your stable core player on the PA that's now your really only win condition. It's just very, it's basic. It's a basic draft, and it's not playing to the strengths of the team nor the very large hero pools of their three core players. Okay, well, we'll see if they can fix it after the break, because that's where we're heading right now. If you just joined us, you're tuned in to ESL1 Katowice. It's the penultimate day here as we head into the lower bracket and later on the upper bracket final. Right now, though, it's all Maneski ahead against Fnatic. We'll see whether they can make the comeback after the break. Fnatic, Ahmed jumps forward with an attempt, but he immediately gets silenced. Turns around upon the end, the cold press and the Winter's Curse. Not a lot of damage though being taken by the Lifestealer. DJ jumps in with the punch, getting shoved forward as well. Moon goes in with a Vortex onto Ahmed on the side. MP and Ice, 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 they're trying to kill Paladine, but they can't. Febby with a two-man stun, holds him back. Ice will self heals himself, but he'll surely still die to the Diabolic Edict. The race is out. The rest of Fnatic desperately trying to get themselves back to the base. 